Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15 he says for all things are for your sakes he didn't say some things he said all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not but through but though rather our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at things which are seen but at things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal I want you to look at somebody like you're angry with them and tell them it's got to get better amen yeah, touch somebody else say it's only going to get better uh, I feel the presence of the Lord the question is asked as debated with many young men the the shift or the paradigm shift in theological presentations and I regard the shift from going philosophically in a presentation to going psychologically in a theological presentation and the question the young men ask as I would discuss this after church in many locations they would ask well how do you do that and the answer is going from what he says to asking why is he saying it it's a critical difference because most of us have been trained for years and years to present the Bible in a manner that expresses what he says when I do the lectical syntactical breakdown and and deal with the word studies and the systematic theological presentations I'm searching to find out what he said but if I just shifted a little bit and ask myself why is he saying this to me because immediately when I begin to ask why I now begin to look to see what are the deficiencies that I have where are the potential pitfalls and how does this word help me he says something that relates to the present and he tosses us into the future and he's literally saying in both of these texts he's literally saying to us that there is something that is going to happen that is going to completely negate what you're dealing with right now and in order for you to grasp the power of what's going to happen you have to be able to get through what you're dealing with right now so he takes my present and he gives me a vision of something that he is working on and he then says to me that what you're going through right now is a part of the process of getting you to where I want you to go. If that is so, then he has taken me psychologically and he has identified me with what he is getting ready to do. And I'm to take that 
bit of medicine and massage my mind to deal with what I'm dealing with in front of me knowing that what I'm dealing with in front of me is not the way it will be it's a critical thing because when you understand faith then as I've been trying to project the psychological disposition of theology that faith now is bonded up in self-identity and the power then ascribes and prescribes a certain behavior if I'm a child of God I cannot deal with things in the same sense as folk who don't know God because my identity with God brings with it an expression that is based on the impression that I have because I trust the word of God. Uh, Kierkegaard uh, is interesting. He says that the condition of despair is sin. Whenever I'm at the point where I feel like I can't go another step or whenever I feel as if my circumstances are too big for me, I feel as if I cannot overcome the present circumstance and I feel as if I got to be different from who I am because of what I got to face. Well, Kierkegaard suggests that that is sin. Uh, Moltmann, he says, that the sin of unbelief is literally bordered or grounded in hopelessness. Because whenever I get to the place where I cannot project anything marvelous into my future, whenever I get to the place where I'm just looking for more trouble, I'm looking for more heartache whenever I get to the place where I cannot think myself above what I'm going through and still remain calm and the same person because I don't have to be changed by circumstance I, I don't have to become ugly because what is around me is ugly I don't have to become nervous because I'm not so sure how it's coming out uh, I can still be who I am because I identify with the power of the living God uh, in, in, in a sense original sin was was regarded as man wanting to be like God uh, but there's another side to sin the other side to pride is hopelessness it's 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 resignation it's inertia it's melancholy and 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 so what happens is because of my circumstance i'm sitting here and i'm sort of uh, decaying in frustration it's like a sweet decaying force where i'm wondering why do i live and what is my life about and i uh, and i wish i didn't have these circumstances and situations and and remember he said without a vision the people perish we have taken it to make the preacher the one with the vision and the people perish if he doesn't have a vision I've got news for you if you don't have a vision for your life oh I feel like something's pushing me today uh, if you don't have one for your life you sit there and allow your circumstance to swallow you and completely distort and twist you into something you are not I refuse to be different than I am because of circumstance if there's going to be any changes it's got to be God changes not circumstance changes uh, uh, I'm gonna talk to somebody in here because if you can just get through this and not look lose your mind things are only going to get better oh I feel something helping me here it is critical because we understand that anytime you know yourself you have to know yourself in light of who you identify with and this is the why of what he is saying to us why are you telling me this I'm telling you this because you have a proclivity to lose hold of your focus when things around you aren't going the way you want 
I was talking just a few minutes ago and I could just hear it in, in the voice. When, when people are frustrated, the first thing they want to do is quit. And that's it. When you get frustrated, you just throw your hands up and you're done. And, and frustration has a way of sapping your energy and taking your purpose from you. And if you have this proclivity to look at your circumstances instead of keeping your eyes on the prize, what Satan will do is make a whole lot of things get in your way and have you fighting the things around you instead of focusing on where you need to go. And when you decide in your spirit, I don't care how rough it is, I'll roll my sleeves up because at the end of the day, I will achieve what God has purposed me to achieve. Uh, and you've got to get adamant with it. You've got to get just bad bold with it and you got to talk not only do you talk to god every now and then you got to tell the devil something uh, uh, you got to tell him get out of my face i'm on my way and i won't be back no more uh, i feel it here uh, we we have this sweet frustration and the decaying force and sometimes we're dying slowly in a euphoric state of discouragement and it's something about discouragement sometimes when it hits you can't put your hands on what it is that's got you feeling the way you feel it uh, there are times when I have, to, I have to check to the root I have to find it because there are times when you're depressed and you're sitting around with pain and depression should only come when you are happy helpless did you hear me that's the only time when you can't do anything about it and you can always do something about everything because when you can't do anything because you don't have the power you do know someone who does uh, and I'm not gonna just sit here and just fall apart uh, if I got to cry I'm gonna cry before the Lord because whenever he sees my tears I'm telling you somebody getting ready to move because when God sees his children going through anything he'll roll off his throne in heaven and oh I can feel it in the atmosphere God told me to tell you I'm getting ready to move I'm getting ready to move it's a it's a state of mind this discouragement where God is never pleased he is not pleased when his children move into discouragement because it gives the devil praise anytime you are not praising God you're praising the devil and complaining praises the devil what he wants to come from my lips is another complaint what he wants to come from my lips is another sadness is another statement that is on the bottom what he wants to come out of my lips is something evil and something cold and insensitive but anytime Satan hits you and if out of your lips comes a praise oh, I, I wish I could preach it uh, my, my box of loss yesterday my my box of loss yesterday and and as I was watching I said now I wish he had a counter punch that means every time Klitschko would hit him I wish he'd come over the jab and smack him in his head like he did the time before uh, that's just boxing don't worry about it and, and 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 I thought about that as I was meditating on this message and I thought that anytime Satan hits and God counters uh, and and goes over his blow he thinks he's knocking you out and and every time he hits you you gotta praise and every time he, something happens in your life you gotta dance and and pretty soon he gets discouraged from attacking you because if you attack me I'm going to lift up the name of my God if you attack me I'm not gonna sit around here with a pity party and suspend my life because you over here attacking me no I'm going to lift up the name of my God and set an atmosphere in the house that weeping may endure for a night but it's morning time oh, I feel the power of God 
God. It's critical to understand this because one writer says temptation uh, then consists not so much of the titanic desire to be as God, but temptation exists in weakness, in timidity, in weariness, not wanting to be what God requires of us. God didn't give you the ability to create praise and the ability to open your mouth and lift him up because the animals can't do it. A dog can only bark, a cat can only meow, a donkey can only bray, but you as a human being, you can sit and create a praise. You can call him the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. You can make up names you don't even know and, and, and praise him and glorify him. Why? Because that's what he put us here to do, to give him the praise. And so he's still looking for his praise when the devil's attacking you. He's still looking for his praise when you lose your job. He's still looking for his praise when things are happening in the family that hurts. And when you praise him, he opens up another door and he moves things out of your way and he shows Satan you're not by yourself I got the Lord with me uh, I feel like giving God some glory I feel just take a minute out and just 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 holler feel it here. every now and then I make me want to holler throw up both my hands I feel the Holy Ghost here uh, I got a little more work to do I'm not gonna keep you all day long faith then is the self constituted by God and it's constituted by God relating to the self and what he's done in this text is he's taken you out of your present and I'm telling you here if you don't have the ability to dream then you don't have the ability to have hope because hope is dreaming anytime you're a dreamer and you can see yourself in another place I don't care how rough it is right now this ain't the place I'm landing I'm dreaming I see something else yeah I'm riding around in a pinto thank God but I see a Mercedes Benz yeah I'm by myself right now but I see a honeymoon uh -huh, I see see a big house I see stuff changing <laughs> yeah they got me fired and trying to hurt me but I see uh, I, I wish I could talk to you <laughs> because if you can imagine yourself <laughs> it starts in your mind <laughs> and if you keep the devil out of your mind let him have your pocketbook <laughs> I'll get some more money later <laughs> but I got to have my mind oh I feel like dancing in here <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, touch your neighbor after a while. When I, God relates to the soul and, and the normative definition of faith is identity. It coincides faith and identity. When I see you, I ought to identify you with praise. I ought to identify you with happiness. I don't nobody want folk around them with their lips hanging down all the time. Uh, who you hanging out with? Why are you so sad? If you hanging out with Jesus, uh, I feel it in here. If you're hanging out with the Lord, it don't matter what folk do to you. As long as I got God on my side, it don't matter how funny the money is. It ain't none but a test to see do I still have my integrity. To see can I still lift him up and give him the glory. I ain't got to get ugly because things are ugly. I'm still the same person. I feel like preaching here. Uh, give somebody a high five and say it's got to get better. Uh, in fact, God plans for it to get better. In fact, this ain't nothing but a situation for a revelation of how powerful God is. And when I identify with God, it makes the devil mad when you identify with God. 
God because the devil is a spoiler I wish I could talk to you about that he likes to spoil what he can't control uh, do you know some folk like that if I can't have you I'll kill you well the devil you're a liar because you can't kill what God is in control of and as long as God has his hand on you let him huff and let him puff can I preach like I feel it I ain't being too scientific I'm gonna preach that another time I remember the story of the three little pigs and the three little pigs who remembers the story uh, first pig built his house he built his house out of straw and when he built his house out of the straw here comes the big bad wolf well the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour touch your neighbor said the devil's checking you out uh -huh, uh -huh. and when he checks you out you gotta check your house out uh -huh, that's all it's about it ain't nothing but a test for you to check out how much Holy Ghost you got it ain't nothing but a test to check out how much character you have how much joy you have how much anointing you have how much wisdom you have I feel like preaching all of a sudden and all of a sudden here comes a big bad wolf and he came to the house of straw and he said I'm gonna huff I'm gonna puff and I'm gonna blow your house down well puff and he blew the straw down I'm so glad they had another brother they ran over to his house and he built his house out of wood but I heard him come I'm on huff I'm on puff I'm gonna blow your house down and that house fell down but there is somebody who said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and one brother built his house out of rock give somebody high five say I tested my foundation and my foundation is sure I tested my house and my house is out of rock and the rock is Christ Jesus and I heard the devil say I'm gonna huff I'm gonna puff and I'm gonna blow your house down give somebody high five say he's still huffing and he's still puffing and I'm still here praising the name oh my god I'm so glad I got a house standing on the rock shake somebody's hand said neighbor it can only get better because what God's plan for your life it can only get better and while you're on the waiting list praise him while you wait glorify him while you wait I feel like preaching in here can I preach like I feel it I feel like lifting him up tell your neighbor God is getting ready to turn the line around can I get some help here can I get some praises in the house because if you praise him I guarantee you the first shall be last and the last shall be first I feel the power of God you gotta get through it get through it don't be bitter get through it don't be angry it's just another thing that God has arranged to take you to the next level touch somebody say I'm going there I see a cloud size of a man's hand God's getting ready to soak his house with a fresh anointing an anointing that'll drip with you all the way to your house I feel like preaching the doors are open it's time to step in them I 
shake somebody's hand say you ain't got to watch my back the only thing behind me is goodness goodness mercy shall follow me the days of my life I feel like preaching in here Did somebody high five Said things are gonna get better You just don't be bitter I said better, not bitter Shake somebody's head like you're gonna shake it off Say I know you're going through some stuff I know the road's been rough I know they've been all over you But God told me to tell you it's gonna be better so don't be bitter look back and give God thanks for your enemies for he prepared a table in the presence of my enemies thank God for my enemies how they get me blessed feel the Holy Ghost can I have a little church can I praise him a little can I say thank you for all I'm going through cause Lord it's gonna be better a better house better church better money better friends better 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 somebody holler better achievement and identity diffusion where God's getting ready to take it everything about you can't go and all you going through is just to drop the stuff off that don't belong with you over there Woo. don't look at what's dropping off look at what's coming because whatever's coming is gonna make up for everything that got dropped I have not, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, whatever you're going through, don't allow it to change your psychological disposition. I have seen the lives of people right in this house go through all kinds of ups and downs. But at the end of the day, they were up and 
Nada. Ooh. I'm closing. I'm closing. It is when your back is against the wall. When everything around you has crashed. That's when we know the caliber of person you are. It's when you can justifiably do something evil. When you can justifiably be crooked. When you can justifiably steal something or lie about something because your back's against the wall. And when you can stand in that position and still maintain your God identity. Now that shows me who you are. And when you maintain that identity, He'll swoop in with the power of his angels. Woo, I feel it here. He'll swoop in with the power of his might. And he'll stretch you into another level person. And he'll place you on another level. Oh, things can only get better. I want that person in this house that is not born again I need you to rise up out of your seat or just just touch the person beside you and say come go with me come on and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ come on come on we invite you to Jesus we open our arms to you who want to be saved young man young lady don't die in despair and outside of Christ but open your heart to him now yes yes a wonderful change come on